Hey there, in today's video, I am using black and white materials. So no color, except for obviously from black and white, you can make a whole range of mid-tones that are gray, grayish, which of course I do when I am demoing in my art journal. First thing, I start off with some mark making that I just always think are beautiful. Black and white just make the best, best, best marks. And then I, from there, I go on to uh, create one page in my art journal just from start to finish, just so you can kind of see my process and how I continue and push through. And obviously it's, you know, it's finished for an art journal. I was very ambitious and I thought when I started like, oh, I'm going to do two or three of these, but it always takes longer than you think. And I feel like the one kind of give you an, get one gives you an example of what you can do and how you can experiment and what materials you can use. So if you're in a rut and you just feel like, oh, I'm overwhelmed by all the color, which of course we are, there is so many beautiful colors out there just take it back a notch and uh, just use black and white and see what happens. I've, I've gathered all my black and white mediums. And so I have all my paints, all the dry medium, charcoals, all of it. I'm not really sure what all I'm gonna use today. My propensity is to just use the paint, but I think I, tr I will try to mix it up a little bit and just as I'm working in just black and white, just showing you some some ideas and things uh, to do. I'm going to start simple and then move on to some other things. I'll try to do two or three different examples for you today. The first thing I'm going to do is just make some marks on a black. This is a vintage book journal that I've painted black gesso on just so that the white will really come out. And I want to start simple because I think black and white, it doesn't need a lot. So you can do something as simple as these just simple marks and it has a result that, I don't know, it's very satisfying when you see the finished page that just black and white, I don't know, what, what, what is it that looks so good? I guess because it's of all of the contrast, it's the highest contrast. So I really enjoy just a simple mark like this. Anybody can do it. You could make a circle. You could make a different line. You could make long lines. Uh, you could be, you know, like whatever you, whatever your design is, it uh, you could do. So I would just suggest just to start making whatever shape or design you like. And on, like I said, on black paper with white, it just is very, it's super cool. So I can't stop even as I'm doing it for an example for you guys. Okay, so the other page I want to show you, I just want to show you filling the page. Now I was planning to do the whole page with just these marks, but I thought eh, I better mix it up. So that is super simple way to do it. Now, let's say you don't even want to get out your paints. You just want to do something. There are, well, these Posca markers are great. I don't use markers very often, but people swear by these and I know that they work really great on top of paint. And so I would just suggest that you get, if you don't want to get out your paints, this is, how, how easy is that? And the, again, the result is just, it's so cool. And you have a whole, you can have a whole page just as simple as that. And anyway, like I said, it's very addictive because the result can be very uh, satisfying. So let's say that that is a great tool. Then I also have like a Neo Color 2, which is water soluble. So you could then later go in and make it less solid, uh, what do I wanna say, less opaque by using water. And that would be cool too. The thing about these kind of tools are, it's very easy to do anytime. You do not need a lot of supplies to make this happen. Then I also grab just a white charcoal and look how, look at that. Now, of course, again, this would be water soluble. So you could come back in with water or you could put a spray fixative on it if you did not want it to move around. Now this will smear or not smear, but the, the, the dust from this would, affect this other page over here. So when I put them together, the, there could be some dust from this page that affects the other page. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, just white on black itself lends to a super, I, and I would just leave these. I would, <laughs> they're done in my opinion, because 
just I just like the look of that. So the next one we're going to do is the reverse of this. I have gessoed this page with white uh, gesso, and although it, you can see from the here, I'll do a little sample down here. It's not. It's a little off white. I feel like the gesso, but that's okay. So I have some paint some ink and then a couple other mediums, a Stabilo Marksol, a soft pastel and an oil pastel. And I'm just gonna show you as simple as can be, just like the other one, how the marks again make a great result. And I know I did these exact same ones before, so I should probably be mixing it up, but how fun is that? So uh, the other thing you can do is, the nice thing about this, this ink, it has this little dropper, you can make marks, you can do whatever. So this, it's just so, so simple. The soft pastel, again, makes a simple design, however, and you can come back in with water. Let me grab a brush. And if you wanted to move that around, you could. If you wanted to leave it as it is, you could. So. That's the fun thing about some of those other mediums is that it isn't just permanent, it, it can be moved around and there's some things you can do. So the other thing is we could make just tiny little marks with our Stabilo marks all. And again, you could come in with water and you know mess that up a little bit, just make it a little bit different. But you can see just the black and white, how dramatic it is and what a fun result it is. Okay, and then we have the oil pastel, which, uh, let's see, what should we do? Um, let's make some big moves here. And, you know, you could fill those in because this soft pastel, or the oil pastel is very, it's very like, much like a crayon. So, super fun. And it will not move with your water or other me mediums. So, that is some simple ways to get started with black and white. So let's say you were just gonna start with a blank page in your art journal and you only wanted to use, you're challenging yourself to only use black and white. Now, typically I would never start with this. This would already have a paintbrush, paintbrush that's cleaned off, like let's, let's find something, you know, uh, some other kind of media on it. I generally like that. That is where I've cleaned my paintbrush. But for the sake of example, we're just gonna pretend like that doesn't exist. And I'm just gonna start on a blank white page. So typically because we're starting on white, I'm gonna grab my black medium first and then I'll, I'll come back in with white. Some people, like if you're a watercolor person or that, you know, using artists, that kind of thing, you'll know how to leave white space. I don't really know how to do that and that's not my vibe so much. So I tend to go in, mess it all up and then come back in and calm it down with white paint or black paint or whatever. So I'm just going to I'm just going to fast forward this and do some just use a bunch of mediums and then I will try to talk about the process if there's something unique, but I'm just wanting to show you how I would use just black and white to make a art journal page. Okay, so I've kind of got to a place where I have a lot, a lot of luck going on, a lot of marks, and so now it's time for me to start editing. So I grabbed this white paint, but I wanted to kind of explain to you now what I'm doing. I actually like a lot of it. It feels a little bit busy for me, but I do like parts of it. So I think what I would do is just start 
kind of going over some of it. I can bring any of it back that if I take if I go too far with it. But I would like to kind of just edit a few things out. Now, um, I think for me, it's a lot about, uh, and I don't like this, this is the same as this. I don't want that. So there you go. You can, it still comes through. This uh, uh, paint is LUT, is fluid. So it's more transparent than if I used the heavy body, which I could do if I don't, if I want to completely edit that out. So I like lots of small marks combined with big marks, bold with subtle. And then from there, I can continue to, to work to work it out to the degree or to the place that I want it to be. Remembering that this is just an art journal piece, it's not necessarily gonna be a finished a finished piece. So I kind of look at them this way, like, okay, I think I want this even bolder maybe, so maybe I'll get a bigger, a bigger uh, a catalyst tool out or a sh color shaper out, and then, or a different mark. I, I, I don't know if you noticed too, I went from small brushes to bigger brushes. The shape of the brush, the things that you use can all impact the look of what you're making. And the idea is to have a variety of marks, a variety of colors, and not colors um, necessarily, but values. So light colors, dark colors, and that's what brings interest. So I'm gonna finish this up. I'm not gonna take it too much further, but I just wanted to stop and pause and let you know a little bit about what I was thinking and how I'm, what I'm gonna do moving forward. So this is kind of how I would finish it up. I basically went back in with some white paint to edit out the parts that I felt like were a little too messy or the gray tone was a little too neutral. I do like, I do like in general, low contrast, uh, but I do love black and white as well, which is super high contrast. But then if you add the gray in, it can make it not. I like having a big, bold image with some more subtle pieces around the edge. I tried to vary a little bit of the size of this. Uh, got too big for the page. You know, you also have to look at the thing that you're working in, the, the substrate that you're working on and the size of that. So anyway, and then I have some darks around the corners so you kind of move around and see all the things. Plus I made some very subtle marks that are barely noticeable, but I think it adds to that. And you can also see some of the layers from underneath when I initially was just kind of going for it. So I hope this gives you some ideas in how to use black and white just very simply and then doing a complete and finished uh, our journal page just using the two colors uh, of black and white. And there's, like I said, there's so many different tools and mediums you can use and 
do vary your tools because I think it makes a big difference. I will see you next time.